Right. Okay, let's see. So what do we have here? Tier 5 ranked, playing Kamikaze. Playing Kamikaze. Let's see, what was our space pause? This was pause, and this was... Yeah, pause is here. So playing uh, Tier 5 Kamikaze, an overpowered destroyer against other ships. Generally, the matchmaking you want is almost no cruisers. Because cruisers can dumpster your ship very easily. If they're running hydro, you have no health. And as I mentioned earlier, Kamikaze has no gun power. In fact, the T-22 probably has about 60, at least 50% more DPM than you do. You have 48k DPM and you have terrible turret setup. You can't shoot backwards. Basically, you just suck at any gun boating situation. So generally speaking, you want to use your concealment to outspot enemy DDs or potentially torp them yourself. But against the T-22, it's rather difficult because it has 4km hydro. So... Um, this is a situation where we obviously we choose to go to A. Now why are we going... Okay, first of all, choices, choices. Why the hell am I going to A and not to B or C? I mentioned this before. You play to your strengths in destroyers. If you have the best concealment on the server, you go to a cap with no island cover. Because that way, you will always see the enemy destroyer coming. Every single time you will see him coming, as long as there's no island cover. However, if you have worse concealment than the other destroyer, you always go to a cap with islands. Because then you can use the islands to hide yourself to close the distance and then pop out and nullify the concealment disadvantage. So, best concealment, caps without islands. Worst concealment, the more islands, the better. In this case, of course, B has this island in the middle that you can do all sorts of sneaky things with. Up here, you can park behind the island and cap with hydro. Whereas on A, it's rather difficult to get much done and I can't in any way be ambushed. And if, for example, it turns out the DD is capping and contesting here, I can potentially dip into B and kind of get it for free without too many threats. Whereas if you go to C, you're very blocked. Usually DDs or cruisers show up here. Uh, you have a hard time repositioning to B. You have to back away and go very passive. And you don't really have time to play passive in tier five rank, especially in the early game, because people have a tendency to kill themselves incredibly quickly. People have a tendency to suicide stupidly quickly. I already let them know. the t Okay, first of all, I say T-22 is coming here or Emil. I thought they had Emil, but it was actually a Kirov. That's the other potentially fast cruiser. Uh, RPF is pointing up here. And already in Tier 5, the slowest ship determines the pace of the battle. Slow battleships means that, well, we're, we're always going to have to wait for the battleships before the battle really starts. Iron Sky, thank you for the 23. In this case, RPF already switched up here. The only ship that can really get there that quickly is the T-22. So I'm already suspecting that T-22 is up here on coming for this objective. Now, obviously, if you're playing a light cruiser, or, well, a cruiser, all cruisers at this tier are light cruisers. If you're playing a cruiser... Um, Play passive. Well, Furtaka is the only exception. You want to play passive, you want to hide behind the islands. And you can already see, if you look at our team deployment, everyone here pressed W at the same time. Everyone started moving at the same time. But these battleships are so goddamn slow that the cruisers are outpacing them hilariously quickly. And this is the time when you need to play... This is the time when you need to understand, as a cruiser player, I need to wait for my battleships. Because who's going to get spotted first if I hold down W? Well, the cruiser is. And who's going to get shot at first? The cruiser is. Who's going to explode first? The cruiser is. So, at this point, you don't want to play this aggressive. You want to play much safer. You want to wait for your battleships. Battleships at this tier are actually really, really tanky. Uh, against cruisers, especially. So, you want to let them give some time to catch up. I'm pinging, requesting support. Preemptively torping where I'm expecting the cruiser or T-22 to come around the corner. And I'm already disengaging. I instantly call focus on the Exeter, because an Exeter is a tough ship for me to deal with. He's got Hydro, he's Agile. Uh, generally speaking, I want him gone. Because he's going to screw up all my plans to get anything done here. Well, meanwhile, Emil Bertin tried to push into the cap. And we are 1 minute 37 seconds into the cap. And the battleship already dev struck our Emil Bertin. And that's exactly what happens. Too aggressive. You can't play aggressive in a cruiser at tier 5. You don't have the armor, the speed, the sustain. You have none of the features that allows you to play aggressive in high tier. Tier 5 cruisers are very difficult to play effectively. And uh, trying to push into a cap in a 3 battleship game 
it's only, only going to have one outcome. And you can see, Celebes is already outpacing the rest of the BBs, so he's about to become the next target. And he doesn't realize it. He's already in a bad position, and he doesn't realize it's getting worse by the minute. I outspot the T22. Uh, he's not running Concealment Expert. Normally he has 5.7 Conceal. I call target on him. Obviously, I don't want to shoot. Shooting at this point will make the Exeter fire on me, will Pyotr fire on me. It will let people know that I'm here, even if they haven't seen the Torps. So, we're not in a hurry. I just call target on the Exeter, and I go wide on the flank. We go wide on the flank for the simple reason that I don't want him rushing from here, leaving me in an awkward position where I have to disengage this way and then get shot by the Exeter. You don't want to be in a crossfire in the DD. It's very hard to evade shots, because if they get to shoot your broadside, you're always hitting hits. So we give them, we give them space. They got four ships here. We have two. We can give them space. It's fine. This is their strong flank. This is our weak flank. When you're on the weak flank, you play safer. I give them space, and I keep vision of the Exeter. And this tier vision is lethal against cruisers, because battleships overmatch every part of the ship. The citadels are huge. Generally, they don't have heals. So as long as you just spot them, they're going to die. I ping my October to get back. This is not a time to play aggressive. He's pushing into two battleships, a DD, a cruiser. He's only going to die. I tell him, don't push, you'll get farmed. He's his Wilco. This guy is, well, he's obviously, I can already tell you, he's going to be my best teammate this game. Uh, he listens, he instantly turns out, and he puts himself in a kiting position. This is good. If only more people listened when, when you give them commands. So he listens, he puts himself in a kiting position, and he starts disengaging. Exeter sees this as his opportunity to disengage. I just keep spam pinging him. Uh, October gets a good volley in, chunks him for 13k. This is why you can't play aggressive in a cruiser. We're only three minutes into the battle, chat. Three minutes into the battle. One of our cruisers is dead. Their cruiser has lost more than half his HP. And our Celebes is already caught in a crossfire and probably hydroed and spotted. So these battleships are going to cross map him very, very soon. So... Too aggressive for all the cruisers. I reverse, because RPF shows that the Exeter is the closest target, which means the T-22 probably isn't here. And this is where you start doing what torpedo boats do best. You start throwing torps at the enemy. At this point, this game is still in a pretty good state for us. It's fine. Like, as long as people don't play too aggressive, throw away any ships. I have two battleships pushing into me. I have uh, support behind me. And I can just torture this, guys. Kamikaze Torp DPMs is hilariously broken. So as long as my team just gives me time, all I need at this point is time. Give me, give me like, three, four minutes. And if these battleships keep pushing, I'm going to kill both of them easily. So all I need at this point is for my team to give me time. But in ranked, that's one of the rare things. People don't understand time. People think that you have to make a play early on. You have to push in, you have to play aggressive. Why? You got 20 minutes to work with. Why do you play like as if you have only five? But people don't have patience. That's a problem. It's a game that generally rewards patience, but people don't have it. First settle misses. That's fine. They're stacking up. I just throw torps every reload at these clumped up battleships. My Oklahoma is pushing in. The T-22 has repositioned to B. That lets me play much more aggressive. The Oklahoma is pushing in. I tell him to get back. Because, once again, what is the benefit of him pushing in? The Celebes, meanwhile, he gets killed by the Derflinger. He gets cross-mapped from here over here. He pushed himself in a position where he could be cross-fired from every single side. Awful position. Why? No need to do that. We're not in a hurry. We still have time. We're only 4 minutes 30 into the match. People need to understand to not play so goddamn aggressive. My double dual purpose torpedoes catch actually both of them, and these torpedoes do a hilarious amount of damage. The Oklahoma picks up the Exeter, which is good, but he's still in a pretty awful position, because he's nose into two battleships, and I know there's a T-22 in B. He should know it as well, because B was capped by this destroyer. At this point, I'm just trying to support him as best as I can, which is to deal damage. I tell him to get back. There's the torps. Very predictable torps. Very easy to see torpedoes. Still only 5 minutes into the game. I tell them, so don't push, I can kill them, stop pushing. That's all I want from my team, is to stop pushing. T-22 makes a mistake here though, luckily for us. If the T-22 was better, he'd be doing what I'm doing right now. Which is just smashing the battleship that is preoccupied with another battleship. 
and just creating a crossfire. Even if you don't land torpedoes on a battleship, it is so brutal for them when they have to give broadside to dodge torpedoes only to give uh, to give broadside to another battleship. So you create a crossfire. Even if it's just torpedoes, not guns, torpedoes are an element that creates a crossfire and it makes it hard for the enemy ships to deal with them. That's why I'm on the side here. So I can, when they push in, I force them to maneuver in ways that makes it easier for my team. T-22, however, uh, I moved away and started using his guns, which isn't a threat at this tier. There's no DDs that have real guns at this tier. Even the gunboats have really pitiful guns, so it's generally not worth it. Oklahoma keeps pushing in for really no reason whatsoever. My October is still kiting away, which I love to see. My October down south also... I didn't really mention him, but he, he rushed in here and pushed into them. Um, why? I don't know. They had one, two, three ships. He was alone. He could have at any point turned around, put himself in a kiting position, maybe crossfired these guys across the map. He could have done a lot of useful things, but he ran into them and died. We're only six minutes into the battle. We haven't even used the third of the game time allotted to a ranked match. And half my team has killed themselves, and the Oklahoma is also killing himself so now we're two versus five i ask why do you guys value your ship so lowly i don't understand it why, why do people not emphasize the value of staying alive in rank you can't do anything if you die if you stay alive you can do all sorts of miracles for your team still the game isn't over i recognize i'm about to be spotted because the Piotr turned in so hard but at this point i don't really care there's nothing that can really threaten me in my smoke my october is healthy he's gonna keep spotting for me and they're trying to run down my october so i'm just gonna start gunning them as well torping and gunning and just basically dealing the maximum amount of damage enemy team has all three camps and we're down to two versus five this is the part where people tend to give up it's impossible you can't win uh yada yada I'm told that I should be capping by uh, a cruiser and this just honestly just reeks of ignorance and, and lack of game understanding. Uh, at no point during this match has there been any opportunity for me to cap. They have ha I, I have played on their strong flank which means trying to cap has been completely impossible. I can't go B, I can't go A uh, and generally speaking we're still very early in the match. Why do we need to be capping? We don't. But he thinks he was the Celebes that pushed... I think it was the Celebes. Yeah, he was the Celebes. He was the one who pushed in and tried to cap in a light cruiser against three battleships. So he thinks that's the right way to play. But obviously... No. That's that's awful. That's terrible. I just tell him you should stop suiciding in five minutes. Like, you don't, even, you don't need to be capping to win rank. You just need to not throw away your ship right at the start of the match. Luckily, my October is... Honestly, this game... We would already have lost this game if my October hadn't listened to me the second I told him to st start kiting. If my October hadn't listened to me the second we'll, uh, when I told him to stop, stop pushing and start kiting, we would already have lost this game. Luckily he listened and he's disengaging. Mm. Yeah, okay. Tidan isn't... well, he's kind of saying that he couldn't do much after his cruise is suicided, but I feel like he could have disengaged earlier. He kind of just committed to the push, hoping to get the kill. But it's it's a smaller, small issue. I have to gun down this Derflinger, which sucks, because as I mentioned, Kamikaze's guns are awful. Uh, 48,000 HE DPM, wonky dispersion, terrible turret angles, slow turret reverse. As soon as he dies, I go dark, though, which is exactly what I wanted. At this point, we can finally start... At this point, we have a choice. We can try to run down here and save our October, but that's basically impossible because we, once again, we don't have gun power, we have torpedo power. So in order to land effective torpedoes, I would need to be here, here, and somehow not get shot by the Kirov on the way. It's completely impossible. So the only choice we have at this point is to let the October kite as much as he can, do as much damage as he can, and try to secure the camp. I ask him to focus fire the, the Kirov because I have a lot more confidence in killing an enemy Minikaze than I have in killing an enemy Kirov. Because a Minikaze I can potentially gun equal with, and I have enough confidence in my gun power that I can kill him if it comes down to a fight. And uh, how come, he asks. Abdullah asks how come, and I say, well, we're not even halfway to the game. We're 
only nine minutes into the match, and these guys have already suicided. And I just tell him to stop typing, because he's fucked up. Sorry, uh, T22. T22. I, I have a lot of confidence in uh, being able to outgun and outtorp T22 because he hasn't been playing very convincingly because he's, he's let me set, sit on the flank. Not Minikaza, my bad. Uh, and I, that's why I want the Kirov dead. Because Kirov has a lot of gun power. Kirov has railguns. Kirov has hydro. Kirov is fast. So uh, I I'm wishing that he would kill the Kirov rather than the T22. However, he doesn't really get any shots in on the Kirov. And the T-22, for some reason, is rushing at him. Okay, this is... You know what's happening on the enemy team right now? You know what happened with this Pyotr? What happened with the Der Flinger? When, when they were 5 versus 2, and they had all 3 caps. They thought the game was over. And what was their reaction to seeing the game was over? We're winning! So what do we need to do? We need to win harder. 3 green lights, let's go. We're winning so hard, let's win even harder. So the Der Flinger keeps rushing in, despite the fact that he knows I'm here, and that he's chasing a kiting battleship. He keeps rushing in. Pyotr Veliki, he just ate torpedoes in the new house there as well. He still kept pushing in. He didn't care. There, T-22 sees the slow HP October, and he's running at him as well. It's an easy one game. He wants to quickly get some torps in at the last minute before, before the game ends. So that T-22 lost most of his health. Running at our October for no goddamn reason. Look at it. So I get a chance to take a pot shot. I take a big lead because the shells are very slow. And the T-22 is a fairly big ship. That's why I had a lot of confidence in gunning him. And I actually pick up the T-22. We're still down a lot of points. But uh, my October has bought me a lot of time. The enemy team has committed to chasing him around the map. And in fact, they lost their DD while doing that chase. So I dropped some preemptive torpedoes. On where the Kirov is going, and I, this, this is where I secure all the caps. Because having cap advantage gives you so much playroom, you have so many options. Whereas if you have a cap disadvantage, uh, you have no room to wiggle. You have no room to do anything if you have a cap disadvantage, because you always have the caps you have to go to. But if you have the full cap advantage, the enemy team has to go to the caps, which makes them predictable. And when, when you're playing a torpedo boat, the most important thing in the world is having predictable enemies. Because otherwise you're not going to land any torpedoes. I'm dropping early torps. I'm not actually in any way convinced that these torpedoes are going to hit. I'm just trying to delay him. Give him time for me to secure all the objectives. That is all I want. RPF at this point shows here. There's a risk that this Kirov is rushing at me. Oh, that's probably what I would have done. I would have probably popped Hydro, rushed this way, tried to bully me out, and then tried to secure caps like this. Basically zone out the DD. But there's also, he might also try to go for the closest cap, because they got so many points, he thinks one cap is enough to win. So we drop preemptive torps to zone him out, and we just kite. We create distance. We have time. We got a lot of time now that we have all the caps. We still have nine minutes. Yeah, the points look brutal. Less than 300 against almost 900. But we have, we have the full nine minutes. As long as they don't have the caps, we have the full nine minutes. The October actually knew who I was. So, that's probably one of the reasons he also played quite well. So, props to him for giving me the time to do things. Kirov decides to go for the cap. I think this is a poor choice. Uh, so, at this point, the other issue here is the October. The October has moved too far in his greed to pick up this kill. October's or tier 5 battleships are generally very, very slow. So you need to be very careful when you position a tier 5 battleship that you stay near the objectives. And this guy, he was tunnel visioning on getting a kill, not staying near the objective. So I'm in a situation where I kind of get the 1 versus 1 to Kirov. And the October doesn't have too much input on any of the outcome. Dropping some preemptive torpedoes. I see that he turned out. So I'm turning in. I also have a lot of health to spare. So in case he's coming towards me, I might bait him into these torpedoes. But he's still sitting there turning out. Now, this is important. You see that I'm about to glide behind an island here and break line of sight. So every time you're about to break line of sight, you can shoot because you're going to go undetected afterwards. This wouldn't be possible if they had a DD around. Then I would be perma spotted. This wouldn't be possible if the October had better positioning. Because if, he, for example, the October was here, I would be perma spotted as well. Which would make this impossible. But because 
they've split up they're not playing as a team they're playing as individuals i get to take one versus one fights and in this case i shoot him instantly go dark behind the island and i get three resets and i drop more torpedoes there's plenty of islands here to move around there's i still have plenty of options at this point i do want to go for more shots i'm a bit worried though where exactly has it gone and you see that we saw we checked the torpedoes did you see what he was doing the the white circle the white line was going like this which means he was stopping this guy is full stopping so at this point the only reason why you full stop is because you're expecting to dodge torpedoes so at this point i kind of want to bait him into focusing on me and not focusing on this set that i launched earlier so what we're going to do here is we're going to shoot we might take some return fire but we have 10k health he's not going to do enough damage to kill us and more importantly we want him to sit exactly where he's sitting now because that's where we launched our torpedoes so we go for the shot very quickly we do get spotted the october is behind the island we reset him and we're going to slow down and smoke up we full stop try to juke the shots turn in to juke them we eat a bit of shells from the october but we secure the most important task of making that Kirov focus on shooting us and not focus on dodging the incoming torpedoes. And that couple of seconds that he spent on turning his guns and focusing on me was exactly the time I needed to land one torpedo on the Kirov and kill him off. So now I've made it again into a one versus one. We were down 800 to 200 or 900 to 200. Now we're 800 to 500 and the points are ticking. You have a full 20 minute game to work with. Why would you throw away your ship in three minutes when you got 20 minutes of time to work with? At this point, I don't expect these torpedoes to, to hit. Actually, he's probably not even here yet. But this is a terrible position. Why is this a bad position? Because I know he's going to be pushing this way. He's going to be pushing this way and he's probably going to be repositioning to A. So if I'm stuck here, where I'm sitting right now, I'm going to be torping this battleship from behind. And this is the worst angle to torpedo a battleship because you're already moving away from the torps. So you get so much time to react to them and it's much easier to evade the torpedoes. So this position for a torpedo boat is awful. I've always said you want to be on the side or a bit in front of a battleship. So what, where we actually want to go is up here. This is a good position to defend the beacon up here. But there, there's a risk when I go up here that this guy coming around the corner might spot us because it's so close but if you land la launch torpedoes he's going to see them coming and he's going to full stop and that on a battleship full stopping and accelerating is going to buy me a lot of time and a lot of time to reposition into a better place and that's why we basically be conga line all three torpedoes we send them off he sees one he slows down he sees another he slows down further he sees a third he slows down even further and his battleship is basically going to be full stopped and this is going to give me all the time I need, especially since I'm out of speed boost, to get into a much better position to defend the objective, which is up north. And also, since he wants to go A, being up here also gives us options to fuck with his path to the north. We come around the corner. You see that? He's basically full stop there. He's basically full stop. And that gives us the time to drop another set of torps. He turned in to full stop, but he's not going to push towards us. Why would he push towards us? That's fucking suicide. We're a kamikaze. He's going to turn out and try to create distance. Because he thinks, based on where the torps came, that we're down here. So he wants to put himself in a kiting position. But we've already repositioned into a place where we can crossfire him. So we know he's going to turn out. We launch... Note that we launch two sets of torps where he's... Or on the right side of the white line and then the third set of torp on the left side that's because we know he's going to turn out and we also know that he's probably going to slow down or flood from the torps so the third set is on the left side of the white line and now we just kite north we get into this better position he's turning left as we predicted he's trying to get into this kind of position he's trying to disengage and uh, that's exactly where we wanted him to go we slow down we don't need to create more distance we want to be as close as possible we're landing three torpedoes on him. We expected him to slow down, but he actually skipped full speed. If we'd launched all three sets, we might have killed him here. Unfortunate. In case he full stops, I launch one set on the left side. If case he accelerates, we launch a couple on the right side. Switch to our guns. We are about to go behind an island, which means we're about to break line of sight with this battleship. We don't want him to get the camp. We're still down on points. 150 points behind. So what we do is we shoot him. 
and we get spotted briefly, but then we get undetected again, and we reset the cap. If he tries to charge around the island to try to catch us, we got preemptive torps to deny him this option. He turns out, he doesn't want anything to do with our ship, he just wants to get the hell out of dodge. He wants to bail. He wants to get as far away as he possibly can. We try want to get more resets in. I'm gonna try to crawl right up to the island so I can go line of sight. Barely get line of sight. Sadly, I don't get the reset in time because I had to delay the shot long enough that I would go dark and not get shot back. I only have 4,000 health. Uh, a couple of HE shells could kill me. We force the DCP and we can tell that he's kiting away. So, obviously, we go and instantly contest the camping out. We're still down 80 points. But because we took the caps early, we started by securing all objectives. We know we have, we have, we are forcing his hand. What is he going to do? Turn around and fight us or go for A? Well, we can already tell that we're capping the objective. So I know for a fact that he's running up here to secure A. If this would be contested, I would be playing a lot more safe. Note that if the camp was contested here, I would be angling away very aggressively. I would be angled away, I would turn my ship nose down here and be ready to disengage. Because that, that would mean his ship is turning around behind the island. But because he's not capping, uh, because he's not capping, and now that A got capped, we know that he's moved north. So, at this point, we just make sure we have the cap. I tell them, you're welcome, please play safer in your cruiser, we have 20 minutes to spend, you don't need to try to win in two. I disengage behind an island again, and I take some pot shots while doing so. This is what, the fourth time we do this? Fifth time we do this? We reset again. Actually, I, actually we've done it a lot more, I think. I have 15 cap resets at this point. So we se secure our cap, we delay his cap, and because of all this delaying, this shooting and delaying, shooting, delaying, shooting, delaying, resetting the cap, we've actually crawled back from 280 to almost 900 points to equal points. And now at this point, I don't even care if he takes A anymore, because I am taking the lead in this game. Which means in order for him to win, he needs to kill me, or he has to secure B in enough time to score, to get enough points to get the lead. Which at this point is basically impossible for him. So I know this for a fact, so I start disengaging. I launch preemptive torps where I expect him to come. He's probably going to come around this island like this. In case he turns around, we set one set here. Still haven't seen him. I could wait for for him to be spotted before launching my next. But honestly, we're just going to be lobbing out torps all the time. Why? Because he's going to see them. And he's going to be forced to slow, uh, slow down, to juke, to play safe, to basically buy me time. Delaying actions. That's what we're doing here. Time is on my side, or points are on my side. The longer it takes for him to make any definitive actions, the better for me. He comes around roughly where I predict predicted he would pop out. We have a 50 point lead. If he gets a cap right now, he can probably still claw back the points and win. But we still have saved one consumable. So we don't actually need island cover at this point. At this point, I think that he's going to try to disengage this way. Especially because I'm going to shoot. This is important. He could try to rush towards me. But with all these torps around, he doesn't really want to rush towards me. He just wants to get the cap. So what we do was, we saturated this entire path. This looks like a path to safety. He can sail this ship, get in behind the island. He just saw torpedoes. He doesn't expect there's more torpedoes coming. He might think this is a path to safety. So we saturate this entire line with torpedoes. And then we smoke up. And then shoot. Note that the reason why we smoke up and shoot is because there's a slight delay if you shoot and smoke, which gives the enemy ship time to shoot, especially if his guns are pointed right at you as they are. So you smoke up first, and only when the, this shows 18, and I know the smoke screen is coming in, only then do I shoot, when I know I'm going to be undetected. We get the recent, we delay the cap even further. Obviously we don't stay around in the smoke, we don't want to stay around in the smoke. He might be rushing us, and we don't need to kill him to win. All we need to do is live and keep the cap reset there. Now, if he's gonna go, well, you're gonna see it in just a bit. We can see it actually right here. He 
tried to get in behind the island in safety, but I had saturated this entire line with torpedo, so he caught these two here on the side, both on the broadside, and he got killed off. And this game ended in what looked like a guaranteed loss, based on the first two, three minutes. It looked like an absolute guaranteed loss, but it turned out to be a 140,000 damage four kill game with 20 cap resets and four caps secured. So this is why when I say that you shouldn't, you shouldn't give up and you shouldn't try to win in two minutes is because there's so much time and these games tend to move pretty much slower at tier five because uh, battleships are so slow at this tier. The games move, the games move faster uh, at higher tier because the battleships are faster. But in tier 5, all these BBs are hella slow. Like, what are these? These, these do like 20, 22 knots. They're slow as hell. It's going to take ages before anything happens. So you need to be past... But the maps are very small. So cruisers are able to get into the thick of things in a couple of minutes. Like, they can get... Well, one of them died in, what, 2 minutes 30. You don't need to do that, though. You have to have patience. And a lot of them don't have that. And here you can see, we launched all 100 torps. We only landed 12. But on the other hand... Capture points, 160 out of 160. Defense points, 103 uh, out of 165. An 18 minutes, 35 game. Normally, these games don't last this long. But that's because people don't understand to use all the time that is available to them. They're in a goddamn rush. They're in a goddamn hurry. They're in a goddamn... But the maps are very small. Okay, sometimes you get something like... Islands of Ice, which is ridiculous. The tier five map should tier five ships shouldn't be on Islands of Ice. It's too huge. But people don't understand that this is a resource just like everything else. And they should be using it. But for some reason, people don't focus on this resource. There are two resources that are neglected by the player base: their own health pool and time. And they apparently hate both of them because they're in such a hurry to get rid of both of them. And I don't understand why.